Okay, here we are. We're going to do a uh, Path and Tarot reading. We're going to do the nine card spread here. Um, I just started to make some videos explaining on how to work each of the decks, the tarot, the playing card, and the elemental deck uh, through the, the nine card spread. <clears throat> so we're going to do that here, but we're going to use all the uh, decks put into uh, like one big deck, and you can do that with the uh, Orphalese uh, tarot program. You just, you know, program uh, the, the deck to be all the cards and you just you know renumber them uh, etc so that's that's what we're going to do we're going to use three decks work them into the nine card spread we may expand it a bit i don't know we'll see uh we'll see how the nine card goes and then see what happens beyond there that'll be a surprise for you um so we'll just we'll leave the question open um, just so that we can have it be a collective reading so that anyone watching this at a later time they can set their intention right now at this point and then you can see how the cards develop and then we'll do the reading as we uh, go through it basically and then you can see how the reading works but you also see how the reading develops like you get your the stories kind of take on different meanings as different cards come out into the uh, field so that's what we're going to do so let's get started into this here. Oh, this is great. We got Spirit as our first card. This is kind of cool. Um, how this goes, so I'll walk you through it. You've got your center card here is the main card for like the whole uh, card spread. So everything kind of revolves around this card. And so it goes in the center and then we're gonna, we've are gonna we got uh, eight spaces around it, right? So, you know, eight different spots that the cards could be placed into. And you we're going to use... Um, a little bit of uh, rules here based on the elemental dignities. Um, so if you've seen some of the other videos, you know how the uh, dignities work, uh, what matches with what, but you know, we'll walk you, we'll walk you through that here so that you know. So this is cool. So right now, because this is spirit, spirit allows a match with any element. Now this is a fire element, so it's going to match with it. It'll be fine. So it'll, you know, extend its, uh, its influence. Um, but we have to decide where we're going to place this fire element. Position matters in this uh, card spread. Um, you know, having things in an upward position can mean things, uh, etc. So you kind of have to think about where we're going to place this. I feel like I want to place the this fire element right here. So these are the elemental cards, uh, by the way. So they just have, uh, they're very simple in their design. They've got a playing card symbol with the uh, Western elemental symbol. Uh, so we've got the three, we've got the three of hearts and water. And I think what I'm going to do, actually, you know what, I'm going to do something really quick. So that, okay, so we got enough. I'm just trying to get the dimensions set here okay so i'm gonna put the three i think right here so that's social engagements expanding partnerships uh, uncertain emotions if you can see that there so i feel like that card goes right here for now and, and then we'll see how that uh how this card develops as we get out the other cards because we're gonna we also have to think uh, in terms of these uh, three lines here this this matrix so you get some interesting connections the hermit hmm. So I'm trying to think where we're going to place the card here because I could place it. I'm going to place it up here because maybe something will develop up here uh, with these cards. But right now we've got like the her hermit um, energy connecting very well with spirit, obviously. And then spirit works really well with any element. So it's connecting with this one. So it's weird because the hermit... Is connecting to social engagement, which is kind of um, the opposite of what like hermit kind of means. It kind of means you know being alone, being solitary, going inward, learning things. But maybe this is like the hermit's moment to uh, leave his domicile, like 
his place in the mountains to come down from the mountains and engage and expand um, his social circle. So maybe that's what's going to happen. But we'll see. I've got water energy. So I think, I think I'm going to put the card here just because I don't want it to conflict yet with the fire because maybe there'll be something that will bridge that because there's still lots of possibility with these cards. Um, so I th yeah, I, th I think the water is going to fit really good right here because we've got a clear connection with the three, the three of water and hearts. And yeah, this is what I was talking about. You know, because there are cards in the tarot deck that have multiple um, elemental associations. You have you know more than one thing attached to them. You know, say, same with um, you know the major arcana cards and other tarot cards. They have multiple symbols connected to them, so it means that they can associate with other cards in different ways. And so, but this is what I was kind of waiting for to have um, uh, something that can bridge the water element with um, an element that's opposite to it, like fire and air. Um, but we've got uh, fire inside of earth. So earth connects with water. And then we've got the fire above it. So there's there's a nice connection. So that's what I was, so was kind of hoping for. And it happened. Cool. Success. Perfect. Jack of wands. Okay, so this is going to go right here. Easy. So we've got a very clear uh, connection. You know, we've got the, the upwards fire feeling. Um, you know trying to grasp all the oxygen right to fuel it but it has to be grounded in something and that's the earth and so uh and, but then there's a water division too so it's we're getting a nice mixture of the elements here but we've got the jack of wands so it's it's near uh it's near the 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 hermit here um with spirit energy so it's it's kind of just Think of that as just making this card a little bit more powerful in its meaning. So, you know, dealing with the Jack of Wands, it's got a, it's perennial. That's what the, that's the word I chose for this card, meaning like all seasons, like present at all times. So there's a sense of endurance built into this. And it's kind of nice because if you think of how fire can temper something to make it more durable, you can think, you can use that as, as, a, as a metaphor for something. Um, so let's get some more cards here. We got two more, two more slots. We'll see how they, they fill up. And as you can see already, just how this reading's developed, it's developed in kind of a unique, in a unique way already, um, with a lot of, uh, chance kind of built into it. I didn't know what was going to go in either of these, um, sections here, you know, from the center card, but it seems to worked out kind of nicely. The, you know, very clear patterns. And here we go. This is perfect too. So this is uh, water inside of spirit. And so this combines nicely with obviously the spirit and the water around it. So, you know, when you start to consider um, the placement of your tarot cards, you can do this with just your tarot card deck, as long as you know the, the elemental associations with them. When you start to consider them and group them where they are the strongest, you get these patterns that kind of come up. And so this is really just empowering this whole section here. So this really makes the three all the more uh, powerful. So social engagements, expanding partnerships, uncertain emotions. You know, so there's like, you know, uh, a lot of social activity really. And I think that's um, powering the, the hermit card. It's kind of changing the hermit card a bit where the, the hermit um, goes through a very long period of like, you know, no social interactions, learning, self-development. But then at some point the hermit has to come out and, you know, reveal themselves, cash in on all that stored up social exchange. And we've got air is our last card here. So yeah, you know, only you know, two tarot cards, one playing card, but a lot of elements. So a lot of, you know, what we could say about this reading is you know just your basic you know fundamentals of of knowing the the elements and kind of where they fit in so this this reading has a lot of, of what like emotion uh, built into it but a lot of the emotion comes from like a higher source of um, existence like it's almost at, like in a different um uh, dimension in a way like with with spirit right but i think a lot of it what it's really telling us is that the the hermit can maybe become the jack of wands, somebody that has a lot of endurance 
and chooses when to socially engage. Um, and it takes and it takes its time um, because the Jack of Wands is, is a perennial f uh, figure, right? It's there all season, so it's always there. Uh, and it's always going to be there. But there isn't a sense of infinity with the Jack of Wands. There, it, it is finite, but it's just, you know, a very long drawn out, um, you know, cycle. But it does, uh, you know, it's all, it's all the time, so all, in every season. And so the Hermit, you know, considering all the uh, elemental energy present, uh, it becomes that, becomes more socially engaged. But, you know, with a very spiritual-like quality, um, someone who's done all their personal work. And all the elements are here. They're all accounted for in the reading. And that's another, um, you know, sign that indicates that, you know, the hermit has gone through and done all that work. So the hermit's at the, just about to hit the spirit, spirit realm of the uh, major arcana cycle, right? Once you get into the Wheel of Fortune and past that, you're dealing with um, energies that are not of the human condition. The, everything before 10 have uh, uh, human-like qualities, right? You know, the emperor, uh, empress, the magician, high priestess. These are all people, right? So this is from like the earthly, uh, the uh, human realm. The hermit is the last uh, figure before you enter that. So that, you know, there, there's, a, there's a sense that completion is almost near, but uh, it's, it's only a part of the cycle. There's another thing that's going to happen much afterwards and th these are all the clues we have so there's very little clues from the uh, tarot and playing cards but it's mostly just elements um, and again you know back to the fact that we have all the elements represented it just tells me that all the work's been done you know so you got your your action your your mind qualities that's been looked at the fire the transformation um, has happened the vitality you've given life you've given yourself energy, um, you've tackled your emotions, you've understood them, um, and you've grounded yourself into reality, um, humbling yourself in a way. And then uh, that's all allowed you to access a higher plane of consciousness. So let's draw... Let's do one more card. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it feel that we should do one more and just, you know, see what we get. Because we, we're probably going to get a tarot card or, or a playing card, I think. It's going to be one or the other because we've had a lot of um, elemental cards. So there's 75 of them, uh, 56 of the playing card, and 78 of the tarot. So there, there's a majority. Uh, it's going to be more common to probably get the elements because there's a lot of duplicates of them too. Ooh, we got the King of Diamonds. I think that fits here. In the reading i think that's all i want to draw is just this one extra one and fit it right here and that's kind of cool because this again connects with the the, the fire uh, element and uh, you know the earth element down below here because this is the element of earth but uh, the king is a fire energy too so if you look at it the king of diamonds it's an authoritative man someone of high status and influence possible risky business someone who can take chances really and so that could be where we end up as we go forward and like consider these things, consider all of the uh, information um, in, in this reading. We get to the point where we can be authoritative. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily represent um, a male figure, but it does represent um, the divine masculine energy, which is action. So, you know, you can erase the, the, the gender part of it and turn it into just pure action, uh, out outward action. Um, think of it that way if you want to. Yeah, diamonds, that's good. So I think that's, that's a good reading here. That's what we have for the uh, collective path and tarot reading with all of the cards. Gives you an idea of how to work uh, three, three decks together. Now, if you were to use three different tarot decks, you, you could do something like this. Um, the, the tarot decks would, you know, have to be distinct from each other, so it doesn't, you know, or, or you could do the opposite and just blend them all together. But you don't have to put them all into, like, one deck, right? You can have them separate and just draw from um, each different deck uh, 
and do it that way. Uh, but you know, for the purposes of the program, you have to put them all to one deck to, to use them like that. Um, I, I could I could also in the program have three different decks if I want to do it that way. But I think it's kind of cool to to mix them all together like this, just for the sake of the, the program part of it. But you can even do that if you wanted to um, uh, with with your tarot decks. But I guess you'd, you'd, that'd be hard because the the back design with, with it. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways. But there, there you have it. That that's the reading. Um, that was really cool. So thanks for hanging out with me here. Uh, there's you know there's a bunch of stuff here in the description, uh, or or links in the profile here to have more fun with me if you want. Uh, but I'll see you out there in another reading.